So now we're going to get into some upper body stuff um, and specifically some rowing um, positions. And the row is the foundation for uh, anything that's basically a pulling pattern. So it can be a horizontal movement, it can be a vertical position. Um, so things like pull-ups uh, can transfer to, um, and we'll use a variety of different things for this. Um, but the main, again, the main technique is gonna be the same for pretty much all of it. Um, anytime we're starting to pull something towards us, we wanna make sure that we're not throwing certain joints under the bus. We, we don't wanna see a big, um, forward and, and um, sort of protractive way of pulling the scapula down. We want to make sure that that shoulder blade is nice and flat along the spine there and um, it doesn't have to be drawn back and one of the things that I get with people, a lot of the athletes have seen this already at CSIO, but is um, getting them to do a test of strength which is basically to extend their arm as far forward as they can, so to push it off of the rib cage sort of and reach forward and then get them and coaches can do this just start to push down and see what kind of resistance they have there then i get them to do the opposite which is to retract and almost pull that scapula off the rib cage backwards and then also do the same thing there and what you'll find is those two ranges are probably equally as unstable so there's not a lot of packing that actually happens at the glenohumeral joint um, and what we call force closure or the muscles being able to take that ball and socket and really pack it in nice and stable. Um, so if we can't do that in a horizontal position, uh, then trying to go into an overhead position and create stability, it's just not going to be there and the person should not, is not ready for that as well. The other prerequisites again for any overhead work, especially um, when we're looking at things like pull-ups, is if they lack the shoulder flexion. So if they're, if they're unable to get overhead actively without compensating and without flaring out away from them, um, then again, they have no business going up and hanging from a bar and then trying to pull themselves and create stability from that position. Um, so it starts with the foundation being the, start, the rowing um, and then working our way into various other positions. Um, when we're talking about rowing, I like to use early on, I like to use cables um, as a nice starter for a lot of beginners, especially the younger kids. We will go back to the bands as well and uh, you know tie the bands very similarly to how we would pull a rowing um, or functional trainer machine here. Um, but basically what we're teaching here is when, when we grab uh, the cable here, um, I'm just going to get them to sit sort of in a bit of a, a mini squat here and again get used to that what we call packing position which is again not reaching not pulling all the way back and up but actually pulling down and trying to sit that in a nice powerful stable position here so when we've got that then what we're looking for is the person is just going to pull their elbow back to the rib so what we do is we inhale we stay square across here and we pull back towards the side here. Now again, how far is too far? Well, if the person has really good shoulder mobility and they can pull that back without seeing this tilt, then they can go as far as they need to without that happening. But if we start to see this happening early, then the person isn't getting the coaching cue that we're trying to do. So I often say get as wide as you can across the chest, open that chest up as you row, and then wherever that point is before that shoulder starts to roll forward, that's as far as we go. Now the other important thing that we want to look at from a rowing standpoint is that we're not initiating through the upper traps here. So again, this can be a mobility issue where the person has just learned this pattern to start to shrug up, which we often see in people because of things like stress, things like writing, uh, sitting, that sort of thing, causing us to initiate right here. So the first thing that happens is here. So guess what? First thing that happens when they pull is gonna be up here as well. So what we're teaching is really getting that shoulder away from the ear and making sure that they only go as heavy as they can without having that shoulder shrug up. So we keep it down and we initiate from between the scapula there. So we're looking um, more through the uh, mid to low traps there. Okay, um, and again, this is going to work on rotator cuff stability because the rotator cuff muscles, big um, primary function of theirs is to stabilize that scapula. And if we have a weight that's trying to pull you out of that position, then they're isometrically working, right? If the shoulder blade is not actually moving forward and back, 
um, but it's actually staying in that position, uh, then those muscles are what's doing that, right? They're holding it in that position isometrically, which is, you know, generally what we, we see in, in the rotator cuff muscles of their main function. Um, so again, work on that pattern, make sure you get it stable, slow it down, make sure they can feel that control. So if they're going too fast, they're gonna miss when they're actually just rotating their spine, okay? This is another reason why I like the cables is because we can work on that anti-rotation. So the, the weight is trying to pull them this way, they're locking that in using a lot of core stability to not rotate. So as soon as we pull from here and we start to go back, then as soon as that elbow locks out, that's as far as we go. We're not letting that go any further and then trying to pull back this way. Um, again, especially with the, the younger athletes, that's a, a, a great way to start. We can get away with some rotation later on when they're more experienced lifters, but what you'll see with the rotation is they're still getting that pack before they start to pull in. Um, when we look in the overhead position, in the, the pull-up position, we just want to make sure that, um, we'll do a separate video on this, we just want to make sure that the shoulders aren't shrugging up towards the ears as we initiate that pull. Okay, now if we look at just transferring that to a dumbbell, again a row is just pulling an object to you or you to an object, right? So it's a pulling motion, so if we look at dumbbell row, very basic single arm dumbbell row, is I'm going to stagger my stance a little bit and whatever hand I'm rowing with, that leg's gonna be back just a little bit so that I don't actually hit the bell onto the thigh and cause myself to shrug up. So once we get that position here, shoulders are square, nice long spine there. I'm inhaling, packing my core again, getting nice and stiff, pulling that back. See, I hit my leg a little bit, so I'm gonna back it up. Inhale, row, slight hold, okay? So the elbow is going back towards the hip, and that's the cue I'm giving is bring that elbow towards the hip, not straight up in the air um, towards the ceiling. There's a bit of an angle there, which is gonna keep that shoulder blade down. So if we think of that elbow going back that way, that keeps the shoulder blade down. So again, um, that's a, a little bit of a variation of, of a row. Um, we'll often use TRXs as well. Um, to do more of a bilateral row um, for a lot of beginners as well. And we will use that with the elite athletes as well just to um, uh, give a little bit of variation but also looking at the whole body lifting as a unit rather than just isolating a certain area. So really working on that planked out position. So give that a shot and uh, let me know what you think.